Hello and welcome to this panel discussion on the future of finance. I'm Maggie Holland, Group Editor and Editorial Director of the B2B sites at Dennis, so that's Cloud Pro, Channel Pro and IT Pro. And today I am joined by Kumars Afifi Sabet, who is one of our staff writers, and Ed Munn, who is staff writer on Alpha. Thanks very much for joining me. Thanks. So today we are going to discuss um, various elements of the future of finance, um, whether it's the big question of whether cash is going to die or stay alive for some time to come, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, the future of the high street bank and everything in between. So if I may, Ed, turn to you first. Yep. Um, I know we've had previous discussions um, about high street banking and alternatives to high street banking. So what's your take on some of the new financial startups that are threatening to, to change the game and the high street as we know it? Um, yeah, no, I think they're definitely really interesting because um, I think there's a feeling among a lot of people of my generation that the traditional high street banks just don't offer the level of sort of control and um, features on mobile apps that are now available elsewhere, perhaps. And I've moved everything across to Monza. I've been really happy with that. But the, there are lots of other services that offer um, slightly different perks. So Curve is one that lets you uh, make all of your payments on a single card, regardless of which account um, you want to use. So you can hold on to your old bank accounts, but then get tracking of your spending across all of them in one app. Um, so yeah, all kinds of exciting tech, I think, and it'll probably challenge the high street banks to sort of yeah to match these startups with their own innovative features. So, so is it purely the convenience for you, or is it is it the fact that you don't have to carry cash around as much, or are there a, a, other benefits that you're getting from those types of services? Yeah, so I mean, I I use cash very very little now, which I know is not uncommon among people my age. Um, but yeah, so I think the, the convenience is the big factor and particularly the more people that you know that use one of these apps, the, the more convenient they do become. Um, so typically my girlfriend and I, if we were transferring funds between our accounts for things that were sort of where one of us had picked up the bill, um, that could feel really slow and laborious doing that through a traditional banking app or going on the web to do it. And because we've both got Monzo now, that just all feels very, very quick and easy. So. so is it something that, at least in the short term, given the, the, the cash or where to put the cash problem, um, that you very much would use one of these services alongside perhaps a savings account or just somewhere where you can physically deposit cash? Yeah, so at the moment I'm, I'm using it alongside Barclays, but I rarely do actually have cash that needs paying in. Um, and actually it helps you to eliminate cash in other situations even further as well. So the big perk with something like Monzo um, is that there are no fees when using the card abroad. So I recently went to Australia and New Zealand um, and it can be difficult if you're going between countries particularly to keep tabs on how the exchange rates vary. And yet in those countries you could use contactless payment on the Monzo and you get a notification straight to your phone telling you how much you spent in your home currency. Um, and so there's no uh, commission wasted at the airport buying last minute currency. Um, and you can keep tabs exactly on what you're spending and also have the security that if you lose that card, you can just cancel it and you haven't lost a, a wallet or a purse with hundreds of pounds in it. So, so it sounds like cash is, is not quite dead um, in the Edmund household, but certainly on its, on its, on its last leg. So, Kamal, I'm going to go over to you. Do you echo the same sorts of feelings or, or the same usage patterns as Ed has got in terms of moving away from cash to some of these new innovative services or are you a traditional sort of high street bank advocate? Um, well, yes and no. Um, so I, I'm, I have a Monzo account. I've, I've never used one though. I've never, I've never even got a Monzo card. Um, but I do live mostly a cashless existence and I do recognise um, when Ed says uh, you have these uh, barriers when, when dealing with traditional high street banks. The uh, in, logging into your account, for example, takes um, far too much time. Uh, I mean, when you compare it to opening your app, for example, on your phone, uh, you um, it, it's it's quite a struggle to transfer money, um, and yet that still hasn't uh, won me over. But I do live mostly a cashless existence. Um, I do withdraw occasionally when I need to, um, when I'm prompted to pay in cash only, maybe in some places. Um, and I think that's maybe the same for uh, most people now, or at least that's the direction we're moving in. Um, I do have some stats about that. In 2006, 62% um, of all payments in the UK were made using cash. 
in 2016, that then reduced to 40%. And it's projected by 2026 that that level is going to be about a fifth of all wow. payments. Okay. So the direction's obviously there. It's obviously going in, in one direction. But I still don't think that in the near future, at least, within 50 years, that cash will be completely eradicated. I think we'll still need it uh, for certain functions. As Ed said, when you're going on holiday, you use cash. When tourists are coming in from abroad, it's, it just makes life a little bit easier. I think technology will uh, change the landscape. And it is a changing landscape. It will um, slowly diminish the role of cash in society. Uh, but for the moment, I think it still has its uses for sure. Is there a risk that um, as we move more towards these services and these apps um, and perhaps, you know, the role of new technologies such as AI for chatbots and virtual assistants that we risk depersonalising the banking experience? So I don't generally go into high street branch, for example, I will generally use online banking or telephone banking. But I do like the idea that if I've got a problem, I can actually speak to a real person. So yeah, are, we, are we at risk of, you know, depersonalising experience and potentially creating um, some gaps um, that people, um, regardless of whatever generation they are, will, will miss out on? I think we are at the risk of doing that, but it's part of what's happening not only in the not only in this sector, but in most other sectors as well. When when you when you're dealing with customer complaints and so on, I think uh, the rise of chatbots um, just to just to help you if you've got any queries as well may be a lot simpler than having to ring a number and go through several stages of laborious, uh, uh, I don't know, automated. Um, uh, like an automated phone system, essentially. Um, I, I, I think we're heading in that direction anyway. Uh, branch closures have been happening for many, many years. So I, I, it, there is a risk, but I'm not sure if it's necessarily the worst thing in the world. I think we'll, we'll be able to plug that gap. I, I do think maybe you would want to speak to someone. I think those provisions should be around. And I'm not too sure how the disruptors work, how the new kind of apps and new banking services work, whether they're completely humanless or um, they do have people behind the telephone somewhere. But um, uh, I think we'll have to be able to figure out a balance moving forwards. We've had a great discussion about the future of finance. I think we probably could talk for a lot longer and I think there's probably many more sub-discussions to have on this topic as we move forward. But Ed and Kumars, I'd like to, to thank you very much for joining me today.